Good morning everyone. It's Thursday today and this mum has got a lot to do. See all that? Yeah. Yeah, I've got to do all of the things because this is how I prepare for every weekend because most weekends I spend out in the garden so I haven't got a lot of time indoors. So, Shall we get going? Coffee cream is next. I've got a cup of ice and sugar. Yeah, we add about three cups of milk powder. Okay, now we mix that really well together. Okay, that will do. Let's get our jar. That's all I've got left. I'll tip that in a smaller jar for now. Because that can be used first. Okay, let's get this jar filled. Okay. Coffee powder done. Okay, let me clear up all this mess and I'll be back with the next thing. Okay, next up vinegars. I've just got old coffee jars. They work perfect for this. I've got some satsumas that are past their best. So all we're going to do is just chop them up. Right, I'll be back when I finish cutting up these. Okay, we've got two jars. Okay, we have two jars, three quarters full of fruit. Now we're going to add some filtered water. Do not use tap water for this, you will need filtered. The chlorine in the tap water will stop the fermentation. Quarter cup of sugar in each one. A chopstick or something to give it a stir around. And you could do with a little bit more, do not fill them up too high because they will bubble up and over. The sugar will settle at the bottom, but that's fine. Okay, cover with a cloth and then an elastic band. Uh, you leave them in your kitchen on the work surface for anywhere between three and six weeks until they turn to vinegar and you stir them every day. Right, I'm going to get these put away. Okay, next up, brown sugar. You need molasses and white sugar. And as you can see, not a lot in there at all. Okay, I'm going to start with a good teaspoon. Actually, let's go two teaspoons full of molasses. You can take it to the colour that you want to. You can have it very light, you could have it very dark. So if you start off with a little bit, you can always add to it. And even if it goes a little bit dark, don't panic, just add some more white sugar in. And this is gonna take some mixing. Okay, I'll bring you back when I finish mixing. Okay, our brown sugar is done. Let's put it into the jar. There we are. One jar of brown sugar done. Let me set up for the next thing and I'll be back. Time to grind the coffee. 
I've got my Rwandan coffee beans from Costco and I'll play some music so you don't get deafened okay straight in this pot okay coffee ready for tomorrow let's get the next thing ready and I'll be back as you can see my cooker is actually clearing pretty quick which is great right let's get ready for bread okay we've got our master dough here slight wet hand five let me pop these in the oven and we'll start on another lot okay last one okay so that's 10 rolls done let's get these in the oven and we'll start on the loaf let's take the rest of this dough flour this there while i scrape this out okay and just like the rolls you're trying to create surface tension a little bit bigger pan for this but it's fine we'll work with it okay let me wash my hands and I'll be back okay bread lays just a blade I'm just gonna do some little splits in it and drizzle some olive oil over the top Okay, one pastry brush. Okay, I'll get this in the oven in a minute and then I will be back. Right, next up, grind my own flour out of my wheat berries. I am going to try my own home ground flour in the master dough recipe and see what it turns out. So let's get going. beautifully fine okay this is going to take a while so I will come back when I've done it okay well, let's get ready to make the master dough okay I've got my water in there for anyone that's new this is the book that I use for the master dough Melissa K Norris She's actually on YouTube and I do believe there's a recipe on her blog as well. Apple cider vinegar. It's the one I use, it's raw organic apple cider vinegar and it contains the mother. Okay, you use whatever you've got. That's the one I have this time. Sea salt. Give this a stir. Okay, let's add the flour. Now, I've got my home ground flour. Okay, now I'm gonna add some bread flour in. let's see how we go with that <laughs> this is the first time I've used my home ground flour in this recipe so I don't know how it's going to turn out but because it's mixed with normal bread flour it should be okay making sure there's no dry clumps no that looks good okay I'm just gonna scrape this off and I'll be back and the rolls are out of the oven the 
don't they look yummy? Okay, let's get ready for the next thing. Okay, that's our bread done. It's just out the oven first, so it's rather hot. Master dough done. Tea towel over the top, lid on loosely. Okay, let's get set up for the next thing. Okay, I've cut up butternut squash. There's two of them. I'm scraping the seeds out into a bowl. My kids love these toasted. So I'm gonna make some butternut squash soup. I will bring you back when I finish scraping them out. Alrighty, so I've washed these and dried them. We'll toast them in a bit. Now it's time for chopping. What I'm going to do is just throw them in an empty pan for now. Just roughly chop him. Right, I'll bring you back once I finish chopping all these up. Okay, got a couple of onions I'm gonna roughly chop and swing in with the butternut squash. Okay, let me wash my hands and be back. Okay. Don't throw these bits of onion out. Put them in a bag in the freezer to make your homemade stock, vegetable stock. There we are. I've got my vegetable stock defrost in there. I'll probably just warm, gently warm that up. Big tray of butternut squash and onion. Right now what we're going to do, sprinkle with a little salt. Olive oil. Some homegrown dehydrated mixed herbs. Now we're going to get our hands in there to get that all coated in the oil. Let me wash my hands and I'll be back. Okay, let's get this in the oven at 200 degrees, preheated. You pull it out when it's soft, when you put a fork in it. Right, let's move on to the next thing. In a frying pan, we're going to put the seeds. Going to drizzle just a little of olive oil. Just to toast them. A little bit of salt. All you're going to do is lightly toast them. Shouldn't take too long. I'll bring you back when they're just starting to toast. As you can hear, they're starting to toast. So you have to keep an eye on them because they're turned very quick. Okay. 
now there's something to them. Right, when they start to pop, that's your time to pull them off. Okay, pulling them off. There we are. They're all toasted, ready to go on top of the soup or eat as a snack. Right, let me set up for the next thing and I'll be back. Okay, that's our apples done. In here I've got nine ounces of plain flour. I have six ounces of demerara sugar, six ounces of butter, I'm going to swing all this in together and then I'm going to tip in some porridge oats. That looks about right. And we're going to mush this together until it looks like breadcrumbs. What I'll do is I'll bring you back when this is looking like breadcrumbs. Actually, before I do that, let me sprinkle in some cinnamon. And some cinnamon on the apples. Okay. Now I will go and finish this off and be back. Okay. There's our crumble mix. I actually ended up doubling the recipe, or thereabouts. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on here, and then whatever is left, which is why I doubled it, is so a load of crumble mix can go into the freezer. So next time I wanna make a crumble, the mix is already done there. That will go in my cooker tonight and I'll cook it probably for about half an hour on about 180 to 100 something like that until it's golden brown and that is done. Let's get the rest of this mix into here so this will save me at a later date. There we are. Okay, I'm going to go and put that in my freezer and clear this mess up and I will be back. Okay, soup time. Still waiting for that to melt down, but what we're going to do, got our tray and we're just going to plop it in here. Let me wash my hands and I'll be back. Okay, stick blender and let's blend. That's our soup. I'm just going to test if it needs any more salting. Clean spoon. No, nope. that is absolutely perfect. There we are. So soup with handmade rolls for dinner tonight. Dinner sorted. Followed by apple crumble. What more could you ask? Okay, let me clean up. Okay, with the apple peelings, I've put in a jar. I should get one in a bit. Filtered water, quarter cup of sugar, give them a stir, and they will be vinegar in three to six weeks time. Okay, let me clear up and get ready for the next thing. 
Okay, next up banana bread. In here I have four ounces of butter. I have six ounces of soft brown sugar. Right, I'm gonna cream these two together. Next up, add a couple of eggs. One. And I'll whisk these in. Okay. Gonna add, I don't know, a roll. I'm adding these. Uh, three of the bananas are quite small, so I'm going to call it three bananas. If you've got small ones like me, that's three small ones, two normal size. That'll do. Now I'm going to add in eight ounces of self-raising flour and one teaspoon of baking powder. Now I'm going to put just a little bit more flour into there because we're going to be adding chocolate chips in a moment. I just mix it in with the flour and that helps them to stop sinking to the bottom of the, the pan. Let's go for two eggs. Chocolatey, the better. So that's two bags, they're 100 grams each, it's 200 grams of chocolate. Let's stick this in. Feel free to use a whisk or a wooden spoon, I'm using a fork just because I've got so much washing up to do after all this baking that. I didn't want to dirty anything else. In go the chocolate chips. There we are. Okay. I've got these fun little loaf tins. So I thought I'd use them. I've got six of them. So let's start spooning this mixture in. And all, all I've done is taken a normal cupcake liner and squashed it to fit. Okay, let me get these in the oven. That'd be better. I'm going to start filling these up. Okay, got 11. Let's get these in the oven and I'll be back. Okay, last on the list. The rest of these bananas are going on the dehydrator. Right, I'll bring you back when I've finished chopping all these bananas. Okay, they're chopped. Let's start loading them on the trays. Right, I'll bring you back when I've loaded all the trays up. Okay, I have two trays of bananas. One, two. Two trays of bananas on the dehydrator. Here we are, I'm going to turn to 50. Okay, our cakes are out the oven and let's unmold them. Let me pick you up so you can see better. This kitchen smells delicious. Here we are. All plated. The rolls in a basket ready 
the soup. And finally, a couple of videos ago, you saw me dye a yarn. This is the yarn. Doesn't it look pretty? I'm hoping you can pick up that shimmer. That's what it looked like when it's all dry. So, can't wait to start on that. Well, that was a very tiring day with a lot to get done. But I've done it all and I'm really pleased. Hope you enjoyed seeing all of this and hope you give a banana cake a try. I try and remember to leave the recipe and that in the description down below. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. That way you will know each time that we upload a video. So until next time, happy crafting all.